Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, have Cody Rhodes' WWE talks fizzled out? WWE tried to buy Ring of Honor on more than one occasion. Vince McMahon has referred to WWE's released wrestlers as dead weight. And Vince McMahon is going to induct The Undertaker into the Hall of Fame. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And TFI Friday. What does it stand for, Andy? Bank Fiend, it's Friday. Flip it, be. And this is the news. We had the flat F-U-C-K last week. This week we've got the god of this S-H-I-T. Are you all right, mate? I'm indeed. the fiend has set you off Oh, so you've got the black goo. Let's uh, kick this thing off by talking about Cody Rhodes. Uh, Mm. We've got an exclusive report here from Bodyslam.net's Cassidy Haynes. No pains. Just Just pains. pains. We covered his story yesterday, of course, on the Ring of Honor AEW sale and plans and all of that. Uh, Apparently, there's talk the contract talks between WWE and Cody Rhodes have, and I quote, fizzled out as of late. So he's been heavily linked, Mm -hmm. hasn't he, to WWE since he left AEW uh, last month, of course. Um, But there's now apparently uh, a hope that Cody could be brought back to AEW, perhaps in a new role following Tony Khan's acquisition of Ring of Honor. So with this case, I don't think that anything is truly off the table, no. right? Apart from like Cody morphing into like a unicorn and flying off into outer space. But you never know, he's a, <laughs> he's a wacky guy. Maybe he will do that. Uh, but I don't think anything is truly off the table. I would still be quite shocked if he didn't end up in WWE mm-hmm. because uh, Dave Meltzer was talking on Wrestling Observer Radio yesterday or the day before, whenever, saying that Cody essentially received a better offer uh, than the one he got from AEW. Not saying who that offer was from, but mm. when you think about it, who's the rich? guy in all of Scrooge McDuck business is Vince McMahon um, but yeah casting some doubts on the Cody situation uh, here we are the Cody verse continues to be this really weird place that I've stopped trying to make sense of yes. for now I'm just enjoying the ride indeed say it with me kids it's a work oh, don't do that <laughs> don't do that Okay, you're just going to show up on SmackDown tonight. If you're going to debut him, <laughs> debut him the Friday for your opposition's big premium live event, or if they want to call it a pay-per-view, then that's yeah. fine. Look, I do still think he's probably going to end up back in WWE for the reasons you laid out. Look, I think the main reason he left AEW is money, hey. as we often talk about. But I get that talks have stalled or fizzled out or whatever, because it's not that simple, in my opinion. No. If it was two AEWs, for example that are just offering different amounts, that's one thing. But Cody's had experience of what WWE is like and what they can do to you as a person. (laughs) He is going back there with his stock unquestionably a lot higher than it was when he left. And I sense, just pure speculation on my behalf, by the way, that it's probably, the money side of things has probably been figured out. And he's like, you're not going to book me for like the IC title, are you? Yeah. That's what, yeah. I, if I had to guess, that's what I'd say maybe the something. You're going to make me put on the face paint and all this stuff. Like yeah. he, he knows what he's worth. He's, he's without question, should be one of the top, top guys when he comes back to WWE. So maybe that's what it is. Um, but like you say, the, the Ring of Honor wrinkle in all of this makes things very interesting about a potential AW return for Cody. So. Former Ring of Honor champion, has history with the brand. Uh, yeah, we'll see what's coming. Um, I know a lot of people are sick of, of hearing about Cody Rhodes, but I love this stuff. So, hey, yes. jump on the roller coaster. It's also very intriguing because normally, if it was a different time of year, we'd just be like, oh, we'll keep you posted. There is a clock on this. We are what? Four weeks away from WrestleMania. That's right. And, and the obvious immediate aftermath of WrestleMania, where normally, if you're not going to do something with someone at WrestleMania, you bring them back the week after. So, something's going to happen. TikTok, baby. The boogeyman. He had a <laughs> clock. Maybe hey. that's it. They pitched the feud. Hey, hey, hey. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, right, let's talk a little bit more about Ring of Honor, though, and the intriguing sort of history of people trying to buy it. We talked a little bit yesterday that there was another offer on the table for Ring of Honor uh, when AEW purchased it. That wasn't WWE as far as I can tell, but they did try and buy it on two separate occasions. Uh, Meltzer talking on the latest episode of Wrestling Observer Radio uh, revealed that Triple H tried to buy it back in 2018. Um, Ring of Honor did deny it, but there was a little bit of smoke to that fire. Uh, Vince McMahon, though, apparently made the ultimate decision not to buy it because he thought he could acquire a bigger company and then subsequently found out that, yeah, 
can't really buy out New Japan. Yeah, it's a I, bit I, tricky. I, I, can't, I wish I was a fly on the wall for that revelation. Yeah, man. Uh, and then uh, Mike Johnson reports, uh, of Peter Inside, of course, reports that WWE did have interest in Ring of Honor in late 2021, when obviously the promotion announced it was going on hiatus. There was discussions in December, but a deal was never agreed upon. And a lot of people within WWE were kind of surprised when the announcement came on Wednesday night, of course, that uh, AW had acquired Ring of Honor. Uh, the general consensus within WWE was that it was going to be a big announcement about the HBO Max streaming deal, which could still be in the pipeline. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of surprise in uh, WWE HQ that uh, AW not really have snuck underneath uh, WWE and taken Ring of Honor away, but that they have been successful in actually acquiring this promotion. Yeah, for sure. It's a situation where, like a lot of people, I'm going to hang tight and wait to see how this whole unfolds with regards to Ring of Honor as a going concern. Mm -hmm. and we, did, we covered Cassidy Haynes' report yesterday on it potentially becoming some kind of developmental territory. Hold, withholding judgment on that, yep. see how it pans out. But like, as a nerdy little fan dork, which is what I am, I've been watching Ring <laughs> of Honor since like 2004 or something. Uh, for me, the most important thing coming out of this is that look, Tony Khan's a billionaire. So he's, you know, he's not the same dude as us, no. obviously. Um, but he's also a giant wrestling dork nerd man as well. <laughs> yeah. So he he will love that having that tape library and he will treat it with reverence and respect and he will do something uh, fitting with it. That's the, for me as a consumer, that's my big takeaway from all this, uh, that he will do something appropriate. I'm not, I'm not sure Vince McMahon has taken that tape library and going, no. yeah. We need, uh, we need to respect this body of work when my body of work is millions of times bigger and I'm the richest guy and the most successful promoter of all time. But, hey, hey, I, I, hey. I'll, I'll hold my hands up and admit that I am I was mainly a WWE guy before yeah. I started here at What Culture. I knew about Ring of Honor. I'd seen bits. I'd seen all the big infamous matches. But I wasn't as dedicated as anyone else. I also don't have a goddamn side in the war. <laughs> I like both AEW and WWE. And I attempt to bury both of them on a regular basis. Did you know? Twitter keeps telling me you can like more than one Thanks promotion. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, really, really insightful comment. But I will say that I'm glad <laughs> that AEW, like you say, got that tape library. Yes. rather than WWE just because I think like you say they're going to handle it better that doesn't mean I like yeah. AW more than WWE I'm, I really like WWE as well but apparently you're not allowed to yeah sometimes wrestling just doesn't want you back <laughs> anyway we're going to move over to the Vince McMahon Pat yes. McAfee interview um this interview was, I, 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 it was pretty much what I expected. Yeah. Right, you didn't expect Vince to go on there and get hit with like deep, hard hitting questions because Pat McAfee works for him. It was a fluff interview, it was. There was no real insight or anything. And there were only a couple of moments where Vince didn't feel like he was dodging bigger points. Mm -hmm. uh, but you expect that. And we still got some vaguely entertaining stuff. Like he called he called Michael Cole like a horrible human being or something. Did he and say like, he works out at 1.30 yeah. a.m. to 3 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah. So like stuff... I've never worked out at that time ever. Yeah, it's insane. Like stuff like that is quite entertaining, but the response to this interview has been, I think, a little bit overblown. I saw people call it humanizing. What? What are you talking? It was a fluff interview. Yeah. You could have put it out on like the bump or something, and it would have had the same impact. Um, yeah, humanizing. I mean, there's one point in the, in the interview where he goes, it's easier for me to fire people now that we're a public limited company because I don't use my heart or I don't listen to my heart anymore. It's like, that's the opposite. I'm getting out, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting into the weeds here. But yeah, well, the spiciest comment probably mm. is when he called his released wrestlers dead weight. Yes. Um, so Pat asked him about the situation. He said, people always assume that you just have no heart and you do not care about all these people, people you've let go. Are any of those decisions more difficult than others or is it just always what will make the best show in your eyes? Now Vince responded, with the following. I'm always concerned about what's best for the audience. Mm. Uh, always, <laughs> what does the audience want? And if you have dead weight around, you have situations whereby someone's not cutting it and you have an opportunity for someone else to come in. It's like, okay, that's probably the best thing. He continues, he talks a little bit about uh, people making excuses. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes athletes, when they're not given the opportunity or even if they are and it doesn't work, people from all walks of life uh, seldom look in the mirror and say, you know what, I was the guy who effed up. It was on me. In Instead, everyone has a million excuses uh, to why things didn't work. And generally speaking, the heat has to go in some place, the old blame game, and I'm the bad guy. That's part of the job. Well, you know, uh, the, we've gone over this stuff so many times mm -hmm. before. I think uh, I'm not going to sit here and go, ah, you're Vince, you, you whatever, whatever. Even though people have a right to do that. Um, maybe just be a bit more diplomatic about people you, you cut. 
when you're making record profits. A lot of the time when I see or hear Vince McMahon talk, I get put under that spell of his that all the wrestlers talk about. And I find myself sort of nodding along. I think this was the point where I was like, no, I'm not buying this. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he, he can slant things or whatever way that he wants. I'm sorry, you can't talk about releasing that many wrestlers. And yeah. the talent, you know, like, I'm not saying that you should release anyone. Certainly not during a global pandemic when you record profits and what have you. But the fact that you're like, we've got to release these guys who are, some of them that have been released are incredibly talented people. And the reason you've released them is because they failed you. But what they failed is to do the thing that you want them to do. Which is usually mental. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe look a little bit at yourself before yeah. you start pointing the finger and going, why couldn't you get Bearcat over or whatever yeah. it may be? Yeah, man. Keith Lee, Keith, Keith Lee growling on TV didn't get over. Is that Keith Lee's fault? Look, when they used to do spring cleaning, I think there is an argument to say some of those guys were dead weight back in the day. Yeah, okay, yeah I sure. I think the swathes sure. of people they released, you cannot say... Oh, like, the fact that they were like, we're going to have to get some legends back with this yeah. Women's Royal Rumble because we haven't got enough women now. Yeah. It speaks volumes, in and my like, opinion. And, like, just to nip something in the bud, we're not saying that everyone who was released by WWE should have been world champion level. Because no. when you make these comments, a lot of people... Everyone has a role them. to play. Yeah, for sure. Like, a jobber is just as important as, like, an upper mid-card guy in some cases. And But, you know, maybe just Vince McMahon... I, I know I'm asking too much from Vince McMahon because he's who he is, but a little bit less cold on this Indeed. subject matter would maybe be, be good. Well, uh, let's move on from dead weight to the dead man. Oh. The under <laughs> that is a. F oh, I'll tell you what, put that in for the awards, lads. Hey. Right, uh, <laughs> the Undertaker's going in the Hall of Fame, of course, this what year, awards? and Vince McMahon the best Segway awards. Of course. <laughs> Hang on, let's put this in there as well. Just get this nice and clean for you, Benroy. Oh! <laughs> I'd like to thank my. Mom, dad, family, friends, for every, I'm just, that's been practicing my award speech. Anyway, uh, Undertaker's going to the Hall of Fame 2022, uh, and Vince McMahon revealed on Pat McAfee's podcast he is going to be the one to induct him. Uh, nice quote this, this will be one of the most difficult things I've done in my life, because I like the guy. I love the guy, not just like, I love the guy. We've known each other for so many years, and we've been through all kinds of situations, and he sort of rambles on about like, oh, some stuff you can't talk about. And he continues, uh, you have to have a family on the road, you have to have people you can count on and rely on, people that are loyal, uh, what have you and uh, trustworthy and not have to look over your shoulder and he is that kind of guy. Um, no surprise really, Andy, that he has a lot of love and adoration uh, for Taker yeah. and I think it's appropriate he's the guy to induct him. I think so, yeah, 100% of all the people in the wrestling world, I think Vince is the one who has always spoken about The Undertaker with the most reverence and all the things they've done together and you know, Undertaker was with him as an active performer for 30 years and if you, uh, you know, retirement doesn't really mean a whole lot in pro wrestling, so maybe he will be again. Uh, but yeah, not, not surprised, entirely appropriate. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it just reminds me of the... No. Yeah, of course. Clip of him nearly of in tears, nearly on Taker's documentary. Uh... For me, it was either Vince McMahon or Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide, <laughs> inducting him. So I just just edged it, probably Vince. Yeah, probably not Kane these days. Mm. Probably not. Yeah, I think he's been given up of a platform. Right, uh, Twitter questions today. Yes. Oh, it, oh, I've remembered yeah. now what this is. We're doing a new gimmick on Fridays, Big Dumb Fridays. <laughs> Big Dumb Fridays, you flipping losers. Whereby you know, you, during the week we get all your good questions, your insightful mm. questions, mm. your your fun mm. questions. Uh, Adam gathers those, but me as uh, what culture's biggest dumbass. <laughs> uh, on Friday we do dumb questions. Yes. So I, I put out a friend if you've not seen it on Friday morning, saying, "Hey, send me your worst questions, and we will answer them on the video." So I think I got like 80 responses in about half an oh, hour. Oh, thank you guys. Which is absurd. Uh, but here we go. I've picked three of the absolute worst, okay. with the dumbest, stupidest, yeah, stuff. You'll you'll see what I mean. So Mike Nutridge okay. asks the following to start. Next wrestling creature to join AEW that isn't a dinosaur? Question what? mark. Yep, there we go. Um, perhaps the fiend, but the, what, what, the what fiend? do you reckon? Uh, as in, like, can I just make a wrestler be a character? I, th I think it has to be already established. Uh, let's let's go all the way, and you've got to choose a creature, like an actual creature, not just like Dino Guy. Well, I was, I was getting my mind automatically went for some reason to is it Black Taurus in Impact? Yes, he's I was looking awesome. at the roster and yeah. I was like, who the hell's this guy? <laughs> I don't really watch that much Impact. Well, he's looking through the roster page. I think we were talking about it was the Forbidden Door uh, d d Rumble entrance, yes. and then we were looking, we were like, ah, oh, Matt Cardona oh, yeah. or Rhino or you know whoever it may be. And then I was like, wait a second, what's this? <laughs> yeah. So Black Taurus, or if I can dress someone up, I'd have. Um, some loser who isn't doing anything at the moment 
become a wrestling hedgehog. Because <laughs> how can you pick him up? Exactly. Like, if he rolls on you, you just, oh, you're he's dead. spikes out, boom. You're getting popped like a zit. I'm going to go for the flat himself. Yeah. Because uh, how do you wrestle a, a, a gigantic melting dinosaur gator? You just can't I'd do like it. him to do that. You remember the Edge's entrance when he just sort of slide and then just be there? <laughs> Being flat. Flat. If you don't know who the flat F-U-C-K is, Google. <laughs> yeah. Google Andy Murray's Twitter time. Just have a look on my Twitter. Yeah, you'll find him. You'll find him. If only we could put the jingle in the video, but nope. Shout out to Gators Daily on Twitter. Um, <laughs> also, the flat looks so slow, it'll probably take him about two hours to get to the ring. Yeah. So the show's over, so he wins by default. <laughs> or they put him on one of those Royal Rumble carts they had. <laughs> you know, and they're just like, oh, there's the big show, and now we're going to cut to the crowd for 10 minutes. And look at that, somehow he's at the ring. <laughs> Here comes the gigantic alligator. <laughs> uh, second question comes from Nast, who asks the following. <laughs> what kind of fruit would the fiend absolutely not have sex with? Ooh. I well, think he definitely, he would, definitely have sex with a pineapple. He would, he would put his knob in a prickly pear. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, what <laughs> he wouldn't have sex with. Yeah. Just looking at the guy, I'm, sorry, I'm just trying to really, really, you know, get into his, his mindset. Grapes. Bag of grapes. He wouldn't shag a bag of grapes. Yeah. What's on. the softest fruit? What's the mm, a nice peach. Like a mushed up banana. Yeah. Like he wouldn't do that, it's too easy. Yeah. The Fiend likes a <laughs> challenge. <laughs> we tried so hard not to swear. Go on, it's just say the effing Fiend, go on. He's not gonna shag a <laughs> bag of grass. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, unless, unless they're seedless. Yeah. Exactly. Have it out in the comments. Well, that's, right, that's three swears I've got to tell yeah. Ben Roy. We, we censored the flat, the flat F-U-C-K. <laughs> we messed the, final we messed question, the fruit Final up. question. Final question. Nothing to do with wrestling. Good. Don't care. Uh, it comes from Donatron. <laughs> who asks, Great name. Excellent name. If fruitarians can only eat things that naturally fall of their own accord, like an apple follow it, falling from a tree that nobody picks up. What if someone drops a Greg sausage roll? The question is, okay. could they have a steak if a cow fell down a cliff? <laughs> Is this like taking cow tipping a little bit? Are people, do people know what cow tipping is outside of the UK? I, I, God, I hope so. So cow tipping is uh, the, I'm fairly certain it's not a thing. Yeah. But it's sneaking into a farmer's field <laughs> at night whilst the cows are asleep and pushing them over. Don't do it, by the way. That's, That's horrible. Mean. Did you um, ever, like... But yes, I, I think if, uh, you know, like in <laughs> midsummer, uh, if a cow goes and jumps off a cliff, Fair game for yeah. me. If there's, uh, you know, that, it, it, it's like a video game. When the cow hits the ground, like a bunch of stakes just fall out. <laughs> to totally fine That's for me. That's what the Elden Ring is, isn't it? That That is the Elden Ring. Did you know it's also a demon soul? I do, I've genuinely, I've watched people really enjoying this. I've still just finishing up Spider-Man, the first one on PS4. Ah. Oh, we'll get there eventually, but I've seen you. It's, it looks incredibly difficult from what I've seen it's, on social it, media. Yeah, it is, man. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Ring is uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very difficult anime. Uh, I, 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 you're enjoying it, aren't you? I love the game. Yeah. yeah I think it's and really if you good. enjoy it and you want to read or hear more about it, check out What Culture yeah. Gaming. Scott's been playing it loads, I'm sure. And let us know what you think of the fiend shagging fruits. Indeed. And we'll move on to today's <laughs> and finally, you've probably already seen this tweet, let's be honest, if you're on here, because uh, Brian Dan Danielson tweeted uh, after Eddie Kingston shared someone's lovely project. Uh, what I like about Eddie Kingston is he shares awesome projects by cool people about great wrestling. What I don't like about Eddie Kingston is Eddie Kingston. <laughs> Honestly, Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston, Matt Cardona, their social media presence need to be protected at all costs. And Eddie, Eddie's quote tweet replied to this was tremendous. Effort. It's tremendous. Don't it's forget to join us for the Revolution live stream on uh, Sunday, by the way, because we're going to oh, see yeah. him battering Chris Jericho, who then will be like, well, well played, sir. Yeah. Offer him handshake. Slap the fucking taste out of his mouth. Congratulations just... to Chris Jericho, by the way, on a hell of a transformation too. It, it, unreal. What is his secret? Tell me your secrets, Chris. Yes. Because, like, you see Like 50 odd as well. 51. Fair play. Yeah. And he's done that in like two months. But yes, Brian Imagine. Danielson, excellent Twitter game. If you're not following him on Twitter, are you even a wrestling fan? Uh, right, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts with pre in Smackdown, we're previewing Rampage, and we've got Wrestle Culture. Well, we'll be previewing AW Revolution, and I've got a very special bloody good quiz for one Andy Murray to come this afternoon. Is that about the feet? Oh, maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, you can let us know your thoughts on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray. The H stands for the Fiend. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks, Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your bag of grapes today, and we. We'll see you soon. Give praise to the flat. <laughs>